everybody, how are you doing? Um, so today we're going to make um, granola bars, homemade. Something like a snack that you could actually keep in the freezer, you can actually store them in the freezer or keep them in the fridge. And it will kind of replace something like, you know, if you were used to having a coffee or tea at three o'clock um, with biscuits, and maybe you started with one biscuit and got on to two, three, four, um, before you know the whole packet's finished. So just try to uh, give yourself good habits, of putting the right ingredient in your body. I mean, even what I'm making today are not calorie free, you know, they have calories, but they, they are all good ingredients in it. That if you do need to go and have another sweet treat, it's better to have this than buying the shop bought one. So, what you need first is you need to put your oven on 180 degrees because they're going to be baked. They are squares, granola squares. You will need a, this is rather large, you could do with a smaller one, a 20 centimeters will be good. Um, however, I only have this one, so I've just lined it with foil. Um, in here, I have got nut butter, which is, you could use any nut butter, so peanut butter, uh, you could use almond butter, you could use um, cashew butter. Um, and then I've put some coconut oil in that. So I've used two, four teaspoons of, four tablespoons of uh, nut butter, and two tablespoons of coconut oil, which is obviously solidified at the moment because it's not as warm here. And we're gonna warm this up. We're also going to put small amount of honey in there. So I'm gonna put one big tablespoon of honey in. It will make around 12 to 16, so that's not too much when you actually divide that into all of the other ingredients. So while that is cooking in medium heat, so what we're doing here is we're just making the that pot with the oil and nut butter warm, melted, and then on with our dry ingredients, which mainly is oats and milled organic flax, sunflower, pumpkin, sesame seeds, goji berries. Now you, they, these come in different varieties. Some have more nuts in there. Some have goji berries in there. You can put this this particular thing is very good for omega three. Um, needs and you can sprinkle it on your porridge etc but I'm going to use this mixture to put in with the oats and then and combine that with our oils uh, with some raisins in it and that's really it and then we're gonna bake it but if you didn't have this you could put some uh, almonds in it crushed you could put some chia seeds in it crushed so you just need to use 20 grams of uh, almonds um, 20 grams of chia seeds to replace that okay so in my big pot here i'm going to put 150 grams of porridge so this one this one scoop is 25 so that's 50 75 100 125 150 just keeping an eye on my uh another pot the pot which has the oil in it just making sure we have, we are melting that very nice and gently while the oven's getting hot. Okay, again, like I said, if you don't have this premium mix, you could actually add any of the linseed, chia seeds, and some almonds in it. So here it goes. I'm gonna put 25, that's a bit more, 25 to 50 grams in there. And about 40 grams of raisins. Don't really measure much, but I kind of have a rough guess of what this is. And that's really it. And what we're gonna do now is we're just, I'll just show you how we are melting this and we're gonna combine those two ingredients together. It's really about um, experimenting when it comes to making food. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? If it doesn't taste right, then I know to adjust it next time or take some ingredients out or make some ingredients less. But if you don't try it, you'll never know. But if you do try it and you actually hit, you get it completely right or you really like it, then you've got something that you can then make it, store it, give it to your kids as a snack as well and you know exactly what's in it. I mean, this one you could also put some chocolate chips in it um, for kids, say uh, dark chocolate chip, which is you know, the, the darkest 70% cocoa if you can get. You can put a few bits of those in it. This one hasn't got chocolate in it, but you could do that too. So there's lots of things you can actually mix and match when making granola bars, as long as you get 
the wet and the dry ingredients together. Okay, now we're going to pour the wet ingredients and the dry ingredients. Smells, only if you could smell it, it smells delicious, literally beautiful smell. I'm going to just bring the camera over for you guys, or oh, actually, yeah, that's better. You can actually see that we have, oh, we have now mixed the both ingredients together. And what we're going to do in a minute is once it's all combined, we're going to press that onto the baking tray and make little tiny insertions with a knife so that we can um, break it off into squares when it's ready. taste to see what that tastes of all together. Mm, tastes really good, just like a granola bar. And those raisins makes it taste really nice. Okay, and we're now ready to pop that on the tray. What I'm going to do is just going to line my baking tray with a small amount of coconut oil, not, not a lot at all, just a tiny bit on the back of the tray, um, just so I, just so it doesn't stick. Again, you can use butter or any other ingredients. I'm not using the whole of this pot because the pot is very big, um, but we're going to use just a small amount. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this in the corner here. Try and get it to the corner as much as possible because the idea is we're trying to get some squares out of this. I pour that down. Now what we're doing here is just pressing this mixture in. I don't want them too thick, but I don't want them too thin either. So I'm going to try and bring it in closer. Just to raise it up from all angles. Press it nicely. To be honest, it's kind of setting. Um, however, we're not um, setting it without cooking this one. This is the baked version. I know there's um, ones you can make which are cold baked, like protein balls that I make quite regularly. I'm sure I'm going to show you that uh, sometimes in the future. Similar ingredients in protein balls as well. So here we are. Let's bring the camera closer. And let's look at the, here we go. Nice and pressed, as I said, it will do well if it was a smaller dish, but you know what, actually it works okay on that too. I'm gonna pop this in the oven, and then we're going to take this out in eight to 10 minutes. That's all we need. And I will let you know how it tastes and looks. Catch you in a minute. It's time to get those granola bars out of the oven now. Let's see how they're looking. Well, they're actually looking pretty good uh, and just need to make sure that different ovens vary as well to make sure yours um, is not too hot on 180 because otherwise it can burn the raisins in that so what I'm going to do is just score line just on top of that just gently and another one on this side I'm just going to square them up so when this dries we can actually snap the bars into little squares like slicing a cake really and I think I've got 12 in there 3 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 okay quite happy with that so we're going to leave this to cool for a bit and then we're going to crack them up and place them on the plate and they're ready what we're going to do is we're just going to take the squares off and pop them in Tupperware 
just try and be really gentle with them. They will be sort of soft and crumbly, but they should be pretty set for you to kind of separate them gently in this way. So here's our uh, granola square. Just pop them in the little Tupperware where you can actually freeze them and keep them for seven days if you keep them airtight. And here's another one. Have a little try. Hmm. No, it's absolutely delicious. Beautiful. So um, they're not for me to eat. Um, so I'm just going to make sure that I chop these slices and pop them in the squares for my clients. Hope you've enjoyed the recipe. See you next week.